bright spot on your dog. And a boop a doo, Lenny on the live wire line. Pine Tree, oh, the greater tree, you say. Eagle headquarters in the Melbourne market. The greater tree, you said. The station with the nicest listeners. The greater tree, you said. For People on the go. This is official B Day, Beetle Arrival Day, and here is Alan Lappin, Lap Lap in Car One at the airport to tell you more about it. Lap Baby. Uh, thanks, Don. We're at the airport now, and uh, on the tarmac, the atmosphere is electric. Well, the Beatles are just about over Melbourne at this stage. The motorcade has already pulled up on the tarmac right next to us here. There are two uh, Morris 1100s, also a security police car and a truck, a red truck that will carry the Beatles around past the crowd on several runs. That's the story so far. Back to you, Don. On. The excitement here is tremendous at the moment. The plane is taxiing across to the landing area. The police are standing by. Four police courtesy cars just patrolling around, warning the crowd not to move past the barrier. The friendship is moving up to our broadcast point. The excitement is tremendous. They're all chanting, we love you, Beatles. There are signs waving everywhere. They've got Beatle balloons, plenty of them being, uh, well, rushed away in the high wind. Now, here comes the aircraft taxiing up to the area. The Beatles are about to set foot on Melbourne Pearl. Britain's secret web, the greatest export that Britain has known, are about to set foot at Essendon in Melbourne. Right, let's take you to Dick Hemming now at the airport. There's the scream as the Beatles emerge from the NZA and A aircraft. Here they are, waving to the crowd. This is an enormous day for Melbourne, for Beatles fans, and certainly for three years there. It's pretty hard to pick them up from here, just who they are, and the fair way away, maybe Alan can get a closer look. Back to you, Alan Lappin. Come on, Lapp. He's mounted the truck, along with uh, John and George, quite a few other people who we don't know on the truck there, and shortly they'll circle the crowd. They've got a long way to go. I don't know how many times they'll go around. The truck is starting to move over towards the crowd now, and the uh, three beetles are waving away. There they are, they look pretty chilly, they're all wearing overcoats and their bat wing suits. Here they go, the police are leading them around the area, they're waving to the crowd, they have their backs to us at the moment. They're moving along, the teenagers have gone mad, the many thousands of them are there and they're screaming and waving over the fence. The Beatles are about 15 yards inside the fence in their truck, I'll stand on the car to get a better view, they're waving away, the crowd is throwing jelly beans at them. Yes, jelly beans are reported to be their favourite lollies. They're hurling jelly beans at them there. They're having a wonderful time. They're moving very slowly. The car's moving at about five miles an hour. The truck, I should say. Police cars in front of it. Police cars behind it. And motorcyclists as well. Bob Rogers landed with the Beatles. Here's Bob. It's a very exciting scene, isn't it, Alan? It's happened like this all over the world, and now it's happening here in Melbourne. I've never seen anything like it in all my life, Bob. You'll never see anything like you're going to see in the next few days, I'll guarantee you that. Well, they're in Melbourne for three days. But what happened on the aircraft? Good trip? A oh, wonderful trip. The boys are very friendly. They asked for no interviews because it was a short trip. Uh, I'll tell you about it after you've described this excitement, and I'll also tell you about the fantastic scenes that they almost couldn't get out of Adelaide. Right, thanks, Bob Rogers. Here they come. They're coming round to us now on the truck, followed by police. The teenagers have gone absolutely mad, but there's been no effort by any of them yet to leap the fence. The police have had no cause for concern whatsoever. They're moving up. I don't know how many times I'll go around the tarmac. There's Jimmy Nickel. Jimmy Nickel, Paul and John and George. They're waving again. They came up to us. Now they'll crawl back around the crowd again the way they came. Now, when I point out the capes that the boys are wearing, they're the newest thing, the newest pad. They've decided to give away uh, leather caps, and now they're featuring this new uh, bat-style cape, which they discovered in uh, Holland. They had made in Hong Kong. They're wearing them in Australia for the first time. And there it was from the airport. Now let's see what's happening at the Southern Cross Hotel, now that they know that they're the in Melbourne, the Beatles.
Well, you can hear this here at the Southern Cross. The enthusiasm hasn't died off one little tiny bit, even considering the fact that some of them have been here 24, some of them 48 hours, in fact. A short time ago, when three had broadcast the fact that the Beatles had landed, the scream went up all around the place. Everyone certainly heard it loud and clear and responded wonderfully. Well, now the crowd's become a little bit quieter because, of course, they're saving a little bit of strength for the next 25 to 30 minutes. When the Beatles come out on the balcony here, the first floor of the Southern Cross, to wave to all their thousands and thousands and thousands of fans gathered here. I've seen VE Day in the city, I've seen VP Day in the city back in the early, in the mid-40s, but there was nothing like this. This crowd is really tremendous. 